In this video, I'm going to be setting the timing on the two valve 4.6 using ComCam's adjustable cam gears, part number 10254. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because I've already done another very detailed uh, video on how to do the timing. Uh, if I can figure it out, I will put the link right here. And these are the tools we're going to need. You're going to need the cam card for whatever cams you're going to use so you know where to put the center line. Uh, I like to use this little clamp here so I don't have to keep pulling the pin in and out of the tensioner. This is a comp cams a cam turning tool. And this is the trick flow a cam degree kit, part number TFS 9000-16. I'll put the part number in the description. This kit comes with directions, the wheel. Uh, I did an add-on. There's an add-on for these. I, I think it comes with this little uh, steel piece you can use for a magnet and a uh, solid. Again, I'll put the part numbers down below. Before we get started on this, I'm going to snug down all the Allen bolts and the the cam uh, gear bolt as well. That way we can that's not moving around when we go to start checking the timing. And before I put the wheel on, and put this clamp on here. Doesn't have to be super tight, you just don't want it moving. And I put the wheel on this thing and take the gnarled in, unscrew it. And the wheel slides over this part. Yeah, you got this indicator, you need something to ha have indicate what, what is on the wheel. Now piston stop, I had to modify this one and just grind it down. There was a bevel on here. Okay, so our keyway was in this area right here, which is pretty close to top dead center. I'm going to rotate it around uh, a little bit this way to get it before top dead center. And since I got my piston stop in there, I'm going to be careful and go slow. Make sure I hit that piston stop. Okay, so now the keyway is straight that way. That means I know that the number one piston is down. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple turns on that. Now I'm going to put a couple turns on the piston stop. Screw it down in there. And let's see if it makes contact. You want to go slow because that piston stops down. You don't want to crash the piston into it. There. Touching. Now rotate it around, see where it hits. Okay, we're at 34 on this side. And 24 on this side, so... Okay, so we have top dead center here. Uh, well, the idea of this is to get the same amount of grease on either side from when it, when it touches the piston stop. Uh, so on that side we had 34, this side we have 24, so there's 10 difference, so we're going to add 5. Move this from 24 to 29. And now we got 29 on this side, we'll rotate it around, see what we get on the other side. And we're right on 29 on this side, so we're good. Now we can take our piston stop out. And now I'm going to put the pointer on top dead center. Okay, we're going to start with number six intake lobe. Uh, the reason why we do number six is because number six and number one are companion cylinders. Uh, so they're both at top dead center at the same time. Once we do six, we'll move over to number one. Okay, I got my dial indicator set up. It's basically in line with the with the valve retainer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around so that the cam lobe pushes down on it, and then kind of recenter this thing. Make sure it's good. Okay, so we're at about peak, so I just want to make sure that it's straight up and down. Okay, so we're at we're at the peak lift now. It's pretty straight up and down. Now I'll be able to zero it out once it gets on the the peak of it. 
Okay, so I've gone back and forth and made sure that my uh, gauge was zeroed out. When it's at peak, we don't take our measurements at peak. We take them at 50 thousandths before and 50 thousandths after. And so I'm going to switch to this breaker bar to get a little bit better torque on it. And then we're going to back it off. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've already backed it off. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to stop it at 50 thousandths and get a reading. So at 50 thousandths, we got a reading of 82. Now we're going to rotate it past the zero and stop it on 50 thousandths on the back side. Get another reading. So there's zero. And we got 149. Take 82 plus 149 equals 231 divided by 2. So we're at 115.5 center line right now. And if we look at our cam card, it calls for a center line of 108. So if we're at 115.5 minus 108, we need to remove 7.5 degrees. If we took a, take a look at our wheel, here's 149, which is what we got last, and 108, uh, which is our first reading, or 89, whichever, 82, whatever it was. So right in here is where we're hitting our intake center line, and we want it to happen sooner, so we need to advance the cam forward. So we're going to turn the cam this way so the events start happening sooner. We'll remember that when we move up to our, our cam gear. We want to rotate the cam clockwise. First we need to get it off of the cam lobe. Now we can loosen the cam bolt. And I'm going to loosen these four allens. Now the cool thing about this cam gear is that the inside or the back side rotates differently independently from the outside. So as we turn the outside, uh, either we rotate the outside that way, which is going to bring the cam backwards in relation to the cam gear, or we can move the, the outside portion in or to the left counterclockwise, which in essence puts, puts the cam more clockwise, which is the way we want to go. So when we turn this, this is the adjusting, uh, it's like a little cam bolt in there. We're going to stick that in there and we're going to turn it. Right now we're centered uh, and we're going to turn it uh, clockwise, which is going to rotate the outside piece uh, to the left. So as we turn this cam bolt here, it either advances or retards the cam. And we want to go, this is retarding. And this way you can see the bolts moving and you can see in the window. So we're going to go a few degrees and go halfway, which three degrees. Now we'll get another reading. And we got 79, 146. Okay, we got 79 plus 146 equals 225 divided by 2. So 112.5, we're moving in the right direction. Okay, I'm going to try and go all the way. And we'll get another reading. It feels like I'm getting some piston to valve contact. So the pointer's right at top dead center, so right before top dead center, we need to back that back off. Okay, so when I was set this at uh, what would have been 108 degrees advance, I was getting piston to valve contact. Uh, so I backed it off and I got it to about 110 degrees before I wasn't getting any piston to valve contact. Um, but I backed it off a few more degrees just to make sure that uh, we're not going to get any piston to valve contact. So this is sitting at 
113 center low, which is only uh, about a degree advanced, but uh, you know, instead of having piston to valve contact, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, so uh, what is the difference between uh, six degrees advanced and uh, we're one degree advanced? Uh, about every four degrees of uh, advancing will shift the power, power curve down a, pro a couple of hundred RPMs uh, per four degrees. If you uh, uh, retard the cam, it's going to shift the power band up a little bit, uh, a couple hundred RPM uh, per four degrees. So not going to be much difference by doing uh, one degree uh, by six degrees. So we're, we're only shifting the power about 200 RPM. Uh, since we're all done with this side, we can torque these. These Allen keys get torqued to 120 inch pounds with red Loctite. And then our ARP bolt uh, gets torqued to 90 foot pounds. Okay, so I got everything set up. I got uh, my dial indicator zeroed out up here. Uh, these bolts are snugged up and I got my clamp moved over to this side. So now it's time to take a first reading. 71 and 138. So 71 plus 138 plus 209 divided by two. So we're 104.5. Okay, so let's take a look at our wheel here. So now we got roughly in here is where we're hitting. Uh, we're 104 center line. We want to be closer to 113. So we want the events to happen later. So we need to uh, move the camshaft uh, counterclockwise. We need to retard the camshaft. Okay, so I'm going to go six degrees retarded. Now we get some more readings. We got 83, 150. So 83 plus 150 equals 233 divided by 2, 116. Which means we're going to look a little too far. We need to back it off some. Now we get another reading. 80 and 146. So 80 plus 146 equals 226 divided by 2. Put this right where we want to be 113. And now I'll back that off. And we can put Loctite torque to 120 inch pounds on the Allen keys and then 90 pounds on the bolt. All right, so there you have it. Now we can pull our pins on our tensioner. So these comp cams, uh, cam sprockets make it very easy. Uh, if we didn't have these cams, you have to pull them off, uh, grind the keyway, and put it back on there, and hopefully that, you know, take the tension out of one side. Uh, these, I know these are out of stock all the time, at least they are at the time of this video. Uh, but if you can get them, if you put them on order, uh, I, if you plan on using these, I'd put them on order as soon as possible uh, so that you can get them by the time you get to this point. But it makes it so much easier uh, if you're not having to deal with, uh, you know, running too much advance. Or even if you do, you can still uh, mess around with it. It's much, much easier to dial in the cams with these sprockets than by grinding them. And the last thing I like to do after I set the timing is put it back to where the dark links line up with the with the timing marks, so now all our timing marks are lined up still. Next video, I'm gonna put the uh, reluctor wheel back on, of course, you don't wanna forget that. And then the covers and, uh, and the uh, rock, the followers and the, and the lifters.